we now have a one pose walk cycle. Well, that's not terribly interesting. So we'll let's add at least one more pose and we'll have him walking along. And the good news is that it's very easy to add that next pose. I'll show you that you can select and deselect all the action channels, all the bones that have animation on them in the armature by hitting A while you hovered over the left side of the action window. Now the exact timing for this walk cycle isn't terribly important because in the end you can use the NLA to speed it up and slow it down depending on your scene. But let's say that we do a walk cycle where he's taking a step every half second. So let's do a 12 frame walk cycle. So up arrow once, 10 frames, and then and that's the up arrow, and then right arrow twice, and that's two extra frames. So the up and down arrows are 10 frames back and forward, the left and right are one. Now we select all the bone like I show you. A key over left side of the action editor toggles the selection. And then we can copy that pose and paste it. Now you might need to use your middle mouse button and move the header of the 3D view if it's not visible. If you middle, middle drag on it, you can drag it left and right to see the hidden buttons. And these little arrow buttons here are your copy and paste buttons. So if you hit the first one, that's doing copy. So you're copying the post to the buffer. Instead of pasting it with the middle one, we'll paste it with the last one, which copies the mirrored pose from the buffer. And so we just click. And now we've made a whole bunch of keyframes for the last thing, and it's exactly symmetrical. But it's not exactly done, because we don't want to have the character walking place. We want to have him walking forward. And so we need to do a little bit more work now to get that second contact. Now remember I told you that we had three important bones, the torso and the two feet. And those are the only bones we'll have to adjust now, and we can do it all in one go. So select each of these bones, and then hold the shift, mouse, shift key while you select the other two. So shift click on the left foot and the right foot. There we go. Now in the side view, we just have to move these forward so the feet exchange positions. Now we can put a cursor right under the heel here so we have a visual indication of where we need to go. And then we hit the G key. And then while we're grabbing, we're going to hold the control key down. Which will make things which will force things to move on a grid. And we'll move him forward only, like so. Middle mouse button helps with that. And once that is over the cursor, keep the control key hit. And you'll notice the offset is 2 in this case for our walk. And you'll see how that foot stays in place and it doesn't slide at all during the walk. And so now we have, we really have, a two keyframe walk cycle and it looks more like a slidey cycle maybe because the f the back foot isn't really coming up off the ground at all it's just skating forward between the two poses so now that we've done let's save our work and that's a uh, little insurance against strange accidents that might happen whenever you're happy with something it's always good to save it and uh, protect yourself that way against the unknown so the second pose was faster than the first the other poses are going to be a little bit more work now and we're going to work in having these thing down. So now we've done the beginning and the end, we're going to do the middle pose in the animation, which was our pass position. So we go into the middle of our animation, six frames into the middle, and we can hit the home key, and then we see all the 
range of action here in the action editor. So that's our passing position and our back foot that's coming forward needs to be up off the ground in that position rather than skating forward the way it is right now. So we're going to go to that middle pose and have it move up in that position. So make sure you're in the middle, select the bone and now let's just move it up a little bit. Just move the, move the viewer again and hit G and then grab it up and click and keep it close enough to the ground because uh, well I mean you can do anything you want but if you keep it close to the ground you have a more conservative walk uh, if you think about it, when a person, a real person is walking, they don't really lift their foot up off the ground that much. For a cartoony character, there are no rules. It's basically just how you want the walk to be. In our case, we're going to keep it pretty close to the ground. And we're going to rotate it a little bit so it's closer to the ground. And now you can see that Blender made the keyframe there because of the auto keying feature. Now the other foot should be flat on the ground and not angled like that like it is at the end. So it should already be in that pose here. Instead of keying, we're just going to copy that keyframe. So we're going to right click on the keyframe and hit Shift D on the keyboard. And then we're going to move the mouse. And as you're moving the mouse, you'll want to hold the control key down. Just like we use that to snap things to even increments in the 3D view, hitting control in the action editor keeps things snapped to even frames. And that's really important when you're animating that all your keys are on even frames. And the reason for that is um, multiple reasons actually. One of them is if you go to a frame and re-key something it'll actually change the original keyframe you made rather than putting a, a keyframe that's so close to it that it makes an ugly pop. So that's one reason you want to have your keyframes always on even frames. The other one is that your your viewers are only going to see what Blender renders, and Blender is going to render the even keyframes. It's not going to render the things in between. And so if you want something going between two extremes, and you want those extremes to be on the screen, they better be on inertia keyframes. So le just left click when you're happy, and everything is even and now you can see that the foot is flat down on the ground in the passing position let's zoom out and tweak a little bit our pose it looks like a torso might be too low down for a passing position so we can grab it and move it up a little bit and we really don't need to hit control for moving the torso and feet around when we're not in the two contact positions at the edges of the action. We only need to be really accurate in those two poses, those two contacts, but for the rest of it we can play around quite a bit more. So now we have our step. Now it's still somewhat unrefined and floaty, but it already looks like a step in a walk and not a skate, just by adding those few keyframes in the middle for the pass position. And we can tweak it a little bit more and make the pose a little bit more readable. So for instance, we know that the the weight is definitely on the on the foot that's on the ground. So you can really shift that hip to weight the leg on that foot and sort of pull that leg a little straighter. So that back leg is kind of in a straight line and the weight of the character is on top of it. And we can oppose, once again, the motion of the uh, hips with the motion of the back and shoulders. So the character is on a nice curve. And we can go on tweaking more and more poses in the passing position. I'm not going to do everything here. So we'll take less time making these poses than you normally would, just so we can get through the tutorial. 
but you can look and see for instance that the hands are are twinning each other too much they're perfectly symmetrical and they really should be a little bit different especially since they're moving in different directions so we can basically delay the hands and the four forearms from the upper arms to create that effect of dragging your hand forward as you pull it from the shoulder so we'll do that in this case there's probably a few other things we could try but it's a nice easy thing to do and for the front one we'll rotate it a little bit forward as it's dragging back and that'll make the pose read a little bit better and it'll make the hands be more dynamic as they pass each other there in the middle and the front view we can also tweak it like we could bring them in or out and you know change the attitude of the hands in the passing position a little bit I'm just going to move them in just a tad so he's not too much fleeing his arms out as he walks you can also do things shifting the torso attitude um, so you can look at the curve of the spine in the side view as well and tweak that I'm going to keep the foot even lower down to the ground in this position so the toes almost scuffing the ground as he walks um, so you can play a lot with the posing in this passing position to give the walk more character so let's call that done it's at least okay so we can move on to the other poses in the walk and let's have a look at where we talked about having a down position and you can see that the, at least the feet and torso aren't quite walking right so like the foot should be already all on the ground when the back foot is coming up and the weight really is never settling here and that back foot shouldn't really come up until the weight is settled so let's make that down position and that will have the weight settling on the front foot so that the back foot can be free to come up and that's going to happen pretty close to the first contact I'll do a couple of keyframes away a couple of frames away sorry so right arrow a couple of times and then we get to the frame right behind it and let's make our down here we're gonna cheat by copying some keys so for the front foot we can really copy the next key backwards so it's already on the ground we can actually just move that or copy it I'm gonna copy it in this case and make sure you have that control key pressed so you actually get to the keyframe itself and not right next to it and then click and now we have our down pose for that foot the back foot still hasn't quite come off the ground yet here because the weight just settled so we'll grab the front key shift D it and grab it and then make sure that we have the control pressed and then click there and so now we have time for the feet to settle and now let's bring the torso down so we have a real down position and the weight is coming down on the foot now that we have hit the ground tweak a little bit where you want it and so now we have a down position and you see the torso is down relative to the contact and relative to the pass position and that's probably the lowest position in the walk Well, now that we have a down position, the next logical step is to make the up position. And that's going to happen pretty close after the pass position as well. So we can go two frames behind the pass position. And we'll make our life simpler by doing the foot and the torso at the same time. So we'll shift select them and then grab them and move them a little bit up. and we maybe move the foot a little bit more by itself and we can just tweak it and play around with it really and the hip is not going to be so extreme in this position spinning it a little bit that way and that's 
Now I'll show you just some things we can tweak. If we look back at the arms, they're going to swing out at the extreme of their angle arc, really at the down position. So we can do that just by grabbing the hands and then pushing them out a little bit more extreme in that position and maybe pulling the back arm straight and backwards in that position and so now we have an extreme swing in the down position. So if you play it back we'll have a one step walk and escape stops the play back forward so I can hit Alt A escape a few times or scrub it or I can change the end frame of the animation by hitting E in the timeline editor and that will make the end frame be where the where the timeline currently is. And so now Alt A will play back between those two positions and it looks a bit strange because right now he's just popping back and forward between them. So let's save our work.